Uh, Lock Sullivan from the Meadows, uh, about 50, 60 k's southwest of Cobar on the Ivanhoe Road. Uh, today we're here talking about the weed seeker that was developed for the Buckroon Landcare Group. The development started in 2008 uh, as a group of landholders concerned about regrowth in their uh, developed country and uh, progressed from there through help from the Western CMA and uh, I suppose it was a, a project set up in a, uh, as a, gr a group of concerned landholders. I can remember um, maybe looking over some country which was uh, you know, sort of at least semi-open or fairly open and uh, now it's become very heavily, uh, heavily wooded and you know, really thick and, and really thickened over the past sort of, sort of 20 years. This uh, area around the house was running six rams when I came here, and just was you could couldn't ride a motorbike through it if you forget about it and turn around, it's all up again. Regrowth we're talking about uh, in our developed country are, are mostly the INS species: uh, turpentine, hopbush pine, butter, yarran, uh, and people were getting sick of. Uh, the reliance on conventional farming techniques to uh, control these species. The priority for managing invasive native scrub is keeping open areas open, but some areas are very dense and require a mechanical treatment initially. The follow-up is um, trying to have the minimal impact possible to get the best outcomes in terms of ground cover and biodiversity. If these plants aren't controlled at, a, at an early stage, the next option is sort of a, a mechanical process of raking and chaining and ploughing, which is, you know, sort of uh, thousands of times dearer than, than actually spraying the the, uh, the early plants. The area that each farm has will vary from, you know, two to five thousand hectares of developed country, and as as people implement their PVPs, property vegetation plans, it, that will be increasing, and people don't want to have to go in every third year and disc plough country. So if you can target with uh, increased rates of chemical, you, uh, your cost of doing, uh, of covering and controlling that regrowth is reduced a lot by the use of the weed seeker. The initial concept that was quite funny actually for this weed seeker um, idea came from a, a fellow by the name of Stuart Mosey who was a, who was a chair of our Buckaroo and Landcare group at the time. Uh, I was down on his property looking at some country he'd developed a couple of years previously and had a massive amount of regrowth on it. And I said to him, what you need here is a weed seeker, Stuart, so you can spray this country and, and retain your native perennials without ploughing it and so on. He said, it's a hell of a good idea, he said, but God, he said, too, you know, too, way too expensive. And I said, well, get off your rear end and build one. And he said, oh, I'm no good to that, doing that. He said, I think you should build one. And I said, well, I'm a bit like you. I said, the cost is going to annoy you, you know, it's going to worry us. So then Stuart said, well, why don't we have a, look, have a look at putting it up through the land care group and applying to the Western CMA for some funding. So that's basically how the concept started, with a bit of banter between us. And um, yeah, so we, that's how it started and, and this is where it's ended up. The farmers on their own couldn't afford to develop one of these. So as a group, uh, led by Robert Chambers and Stuart Mosley developed and went to the CMA board and uh, asked for some assistance in, in uh, developing this this project. The group have probably developed, uh, been, been at the forefront of developing and trying to improve this country back to its native state and this project and this, this weed seeker was seen as a critical way of getting cost effective management back to our grasslands. Well we offered it to the entire group but we put in a, a, a basic joining fee of, of roughly $700 if you wanted to have a crack at this weed seeker side, you had to put up $700. And that was just to really stop people who would just thought they might want to be a member of it but never use it. Um, so we wanted, you know, committed people. Because we were going to build it from scratch in a workshop, we needed committed people that would come along and help us build it as well, and also people that were prepared to maintain it and so on. The process of, of building was um, sort of controlled by Robert at Ossley Downs. Uh, there's sort of half a dozen of us, a couple of people each day. Uh, over, over a couple of weeks. It was one of those enjoyable jobs in the bush, sort of getting together with a group of mates and, and building a, 
building something that uh, everyone can use. The machine is sort of uh, relatively simple. It's just a matter of uh, hooking the machine up to the back of the ute, uh, attaching your control box, setting up your satellite navigation system. Yeah, just putting some petrol in the pump and some water in the tank and some chemical and, uh, and off we go. The weed seeker works by, um, we've actually got some infrared cameras up the front and they actually, uh, they see the green bush or, or the uh, desired species that you want to kill and you've got your spray nozzles at the back. The weed seeker controls um, sort of broadleaf weeds in, in fallow country. Um, Wherever you've got a background, you know, either, either brown dirt or, a, or a, uh, a, a paddock of dry feed with, um, you know, either an invasive species in that paddock or a broadleaf weed. Yeah, it's uh, all controlled by sort of height and that controls the sensitivity and can often control the actual plants that you're attacking. We use the weed seeker on Glenwood to control uh, woody, woody weed regrowth in uh, cultivation in open, open grazing country. Depending on seasons, uh, maybe every three to five years in a paddock, just when you get that, when the plant height reaches a, uh, when the regrowth reaches its healthiest stage, you know, probably somewhere around the 300 to 500 mil stage, where the, the plant's probably at its higher moisture percentage, you know, rather than actual wooded, wooded growth. It's proved itself to be highly effective cost effectiveness I think in the long term is going to be incredible for us because if you can hit something once and not have to go back for a long, long while, it's, it's got to be valued. It's not much cheaper than going in and individually plucking out the bushes with a, with a, with a blade plough possibly or some sort of a grubber, but we're finding that it's, it's far more effective. You get way, we're, getting, we're getting up to 95% you know, kill with it or 98% kill and there's no regeneration, so it's a one pass hit. It's allowing us not to put the flowers back in, which is excellent. It's moving you know, the right direction with our minimum and zero till systems. Three main benefits of the machine are financial. Uh, you know, we're getting across a, a fairly uh, big bit of ground in a short amount of time. Very low, very low cost. Uh, environmental has great outcomes of, uh, of plenty of pasture growth. We're really um, boosting our percentages of uh, you know, livestock per, per acre or per hectare uh, by actually uh, growing grass instead of invasive species. The end uh, result would be to have the bulk of your developed country back into native grass, uh, perennial native pastures here, and reducing bare ground would be, would be one of the big outcomes for, for most farmers. You can't make money out of bare ground.